Hello. In this video, I am going to show you this interesting piece. It's a Cold War military Geiger counter from 1963. It's a Type RBGT-62. It was designed in 62 in Czechoslovakia and this piece is made in 1963. And the last date of calibration is in 2003. So this one was in use in army for about 40 years. And this is a classic construction Geiger counter with a handheld probe, an analog scale and earphone for sound indication, where you basically hear the typical clicking sound of Geiger counter. And the earphone has a plug very similar to European power plug. And it even fits into European power socket. But this is definitely not a good idea. It has a switch for ranges, a calibration knob, this is where the earphone goes and this is for the probe. This one reminds me of a bus tap or sink cap. It's in a metal housing, which is very heavy indeed. And this is where the batteries go. And this is for two D-sized cells. So it runs on 3 volts. You put the batteries in and put the cap back. And this is the analog scale with several ranges and a 50 microamp meter. Quite nice and sensitive meter. And the scale is marked in decays per minute and square centimeter. And there is some formula and it says that 2050 decays per minute and square centimeter equals to 1 milliamp per hour. And this is the handheld probe. It has an interesting rotary shielding. This position is for beta 1. It means a high sensitivity to beta. And it has big holes in it. You can rotate it like this and you get beta 2 range with small holes and lower sensitivity to beta and you can switch it to gamma and this is covered completely by a thick layer of aluminium and this one is only sensitive to gamma because only gamma passes through it quite nice and when we are putting this one into operation just unscrew this one stick the probe into it and screw it. You stick the earphone in here. And of course you have to have a batteries in it. And then you set it to calibration. And you rotate the calibration knob until the hand is on this mark. And when it's calibrated you can switch it to high range, medium range or low range. And when you put this probe to something radioactive, you hear a clicking sound in this earphone and the hand will show some value. But this one is not working and the purpose of this video is to show you what is inside. And I'm going to show a working one in another video. So let's open it up. And here we go. It's in very sturdy metal housing. The negative of the battery is connected directly to the housing and the positive is on this contact. And the wireless cable goes into this. And here you can see all the parts of it. There is a lot of calibration ports, one, two, three, four. There are some capacitors, resistors, another capacitors, some big diode, another capacitor and resistors. There are two vintage early transistors, probably germanium transistors. There are two transformers and this big analog meter. And from the other side we have... There's a vacuum tube for voltage stabilization. This is the range switch. There are two early high voltage diodes, another two calibration pots, 
There are six of them in total. And the capacitors, resistors, capacitors, some early power transistor, probably a germanium one as well. And there is the calibration port. And the calibration port has this metal contact running across the resistive wire. And I can only see three transistors in it, one, two and three here. But in early 60s the transistors were something very rare and expensive and super high-tech. And there is a stabilization vacuum tube. And because the Geiger counter tube requires about 400 volts, there must be an inverter, probably with this power transistor and one of those transformers. And the 400 volts are rectified by those high voltage diodes and it goes into one of those high voltage capacitors. They are rated 1000 volts. So basically the voltage from the batteries went into the inverter with this power transistor and one of those transformers. And the higher voltage was rectified by those diodes and it went into this capacitor. It powered up the Geiger tube in this one and the impulses from the Geiger tube were amplified by those two transistors and indicated in the earphone connected here and also the signal was integrated and shown on this scale. And the more impulses from the Geiger tube the more the hand will move to the right and the more clicks you will hear in the earphone. And this is really reliable and sturdy military construction. This is no consumer rubbish. I like how this meter is huge and also there are no electrolytic capacitors. There are just those foil ones and those are probably tantalum capacitors. I really don't see any classic electrolytic capacitor in it. And I believe this one would be still working if the Geiger tube wasn't stolen from this one. We will try to open it up. And yes, the Geiger tube is missing. This is the probe. It can be opened like this. And this is the rotary shielding and there is some thin layer of aluminium and this is the space for the tube but the tube is not there and I'm sure you would like to see this one in operation but I have another piece of this type in even better condition it comes from 1962 and it has the original leather case and the original test source and I will show it in operation in another video. And the original Geiger tubes from this one look like this. And this machine is made in Czechoslovakia, mostly of Tesla parts, made also in Czechoslovakia, but the tube is probably the only part made in Soviet Union. It's STS-5 tube. This one is from 1960. This one is from 1957 and this one is from 75. I will try to put this tube into my Geiger tube tester. It has a battery and inverter which produces about 400 volts. And there's an indication circuit with amplifying transistors and LED and a speaker for indication. So I will put the tube into it and turn it on and here I have some uranium glass marbles and when I put them to the tube it starts indicating the speaker is clicking and the LED is flashing and the tube is about 60 years old and it still works perfectly This is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.